Hi, welcome to Teen Pride Book Talk. My name is Lucy, and this is the show on AADL TV, where each episode I take a few minutes to talk about a young adult book that is both representative of and inclusive of folks in the LGBTQIA plus community. The book that I will be talking about today is a pretty newly published book written in 2023 called Damned If You Do, and this is by Alex Brown. This story is sort of a fantasy, mystery, horror book combined into one, but it's a lot of other things as well. Alex Brown is a queer biracial Filipino American writer who in her bio says she loves rooting for the final girl, especially if that final girl is a monster. And this book does call into question who are the real monsters in the world around us. The main character of the book is named Cordelia Scott. Cordy, like the author, is Filipino-American and she is queer and she lives with her mother because her father left seven years ago. He moved to Florida is the tale that they are told. They live in a town in Massachusetts called Ruins End. And at the start of the book, they are about to celebrate something called Deal Day and it's the 100th Deal Day. Deal Day happened hundred years ago when one of the founders of the town made a deal with the devil to get this wish granted and it was granted so the rumor goes that every seven years this happens again this demon comes and grants somebody's wish nobody knows who has made the deal nobody knows whose wish has been granted but there's always this idea that it might be you and if you believe in it you're always going to kind of have your wish ready. Cordy is the stage manager for a school production called Our Demon Town, and this was written by one of Cordy's friends, Sal. Sal wrote the story to reflect the history of Ruins End. It's a musical and it's a pretty big deal. They're entering into Tech Week because Cordy's the stage manager. She's really busy. She's got a lot to do with this. And then all of a sudden, there is this new guidance counselor named Fred who takes Cordelia into his office and is like, actually, I'm not, I'm not who I said I was, I'm a demon. And here's the deal. Do you really remember what happened to your father? And do you think maybe it was your wish that was granted? And a little bit of your soul might have gotten taken that day. In order for you to get it back, in order for you to retain it, you're gonna have to help me trap another demon inside this statue. And the statue is a disnified little Maleficent figurine, which is pretty funny. Cordelia is responsible for getting this other demon into this statue. And it turns out the other demon is someone who is pretending to be a student at the school and is cast in this play. That is how the story unfolds and it's highly Highly entertaining. The action parts of it are written so well. It also pulls in some Filipino folklore. There's this monster, this demon called Naswanga, and there are other people who discover they have various powers or they don't, or they are in fact a demon. Nobody in this book is really ever who you think they are. It's a great story of friendship. There's a romance in this book. Cordy's best friend, Veronica, is someone that she's known her whole life and there's all of this tension between them as to whether they're gonna be more than friends, do they both feel this way, and that sort of runs throughout the book as well. But the main thing that Cordelia is dealing with is the fact that she had this very toxic father. He was very abusive, so when he left seven years ago, she was happy about it. Her mother maybe was not, and so her mother is very cold to her and ignores her. But Cordy starts to recall that she might have been the reason why he left, and then she recalls what really happens to him. So she has unearthed this thing that really has been traumatizing her. It's been affecting the way she relates to other people. And then the book just unfolds with all these other traumatic things. As you can imagine, a book about capturing and chasing demons might include. and. Cordelia is definitely a demon slayer, but she's not someone who's going to save the world and slay all the demons. She's just going to have to handle this decision that she made seven years ago. She's also so worried about turning into her father that affects the way she deals with people. And this book, like a lot of good horror, asks, you know, who are the real monsters? Is it always, in fact, the real demons? Like maybe you learn that one of these demons isn't as bad as you thought, but then you look around and you realize there could be monsters all the time in your real life and you might live with monsters. The scariest part of 
Cordelia's story might be the relationship she had with her father, not all the demon chasing that she's doing, although that is pretty scary and thrilling to read. And somehow it is also humorous while it's telling you this entertaining horror story. In addition to Veronica, who is Cordy's best friend, and Sal, who wrote the play, there is a kid named Dustin Jones, whose grandfather was one of the ones who founded the town. And so Dustin's parents have always sort of gotten him a role in the musical because they give some money and they own a coffee shop in town where Dustin's brother Blake works. Blake is also trying to fight demons, we learn, and has deeply researched demons. So Cordy comes to rely on his research a little bit. And then Dustin sort of gets pulled into the fold. So there's really this team of demon fighters in the end. I don't know much about Buffy the Vampire Slayer, but I have heard that this book in some ways pays homage to it. I think a lot of the character names are the same and maybe the coffee shop is sort of similar to a coffee shop. If you are a Buffy fan, it could be very fun to read this and sort of look for all those Easter eggs and those similarities. I think that Alex Brown will definitely come out with another story about Cordelia and her band of demon slayers, or at least I hope that she does, because this was really fun to read and it was unexpected for me. I was rooting for Cordelia. Sometimes I was frustrated with her. That I think is the mark of a really good, well-written main character that you care enough to, to be a little bit angry with them for not doing what you want them to do. And I loved all her friends and the demons were interesting characters. So I really hope that there is more to this story. In the meantime, I would suggest that you read Damned If You Do by Alex Brown. I think you'll have fun. Thanks for joining me.